This is how the auctions work. You get one minute with a flashlight. The auctioneer breaks open the padlock with a blowtorch or bolt cutters, and you get one minute to stand in the doorway of the storage locker. One minute to peer inside and decide whether the wrinkled black trash bags, the taped cardboard boxes, the bicycle parts and beach chairs and afghans that reveal themselves in your moat-filled path of light are worth your while. You learn to trust your intuition. You learn to listen to that ping inside your gut that tells you to bid. You learn to look for the subtle clues. The shopping bags with a Beverly Hills address. The boxes marked fragile with a sharp black marker. You learn to avoid certain smells. Mold and mildew are no good. You'll probably end up with a bunch of old sweatshirts and socks that someone put in the wash but never bothered to dry properly, just left them to rot in plastic sacks. You develop a sixth sense for the smell of jewelry, the smell of electronics. TVs emit a hot charged smell, even if they haven't been turned on for years, while diamonds smell blue, like sweet cold water. You try to remember that you're bidding on someone else's misfortune. Someone who couldn't pay for their storage locker, who let it lapse into lean. You try to remember that you're benefiting from someone's sadness, someone's failure, that the money you'll gain from this merchandise will come from someone else's loss. You try to remember that there was a self who first put these items in storage, a self who planned to take them all back one day, a self who will miss these photo albums and brittle swim fins and frames filled with dried beans. But you push this all aside when the auctioneer says bidding will start at one dollar, and your own self muscles its way to the front, and your own hand flies into the air. My favorite part of the whole auction experience was the moment right before I found out what I had won. The moment when I was sitting on the floor of our second bedroom turned storage auction storage room in my overalls and red Converse sneakers, my short blonde hair thick with other people's dust. The moment when I was holding my exacto knife over a cardboard box, ready to take the plunge. I found few things more satisfying than slitting tape with an exacto knife. That first pop of the seal, the way the tape snapped and curled beneath the blade, the fusty exhale in its wake. I loved it. I could have slit tape and pried open boxes all day. That moment right before you knew what was in the box, that was the best moment. That's what I celebrated. Anything was possible.